Well, good morning and happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. And uh, nice sunny day. So hopefully everybody will be able to get together and family this afternoon. Let's take our hymn books. We'll go ahead and get started this morning by singing a hymn together. Hymn number 349. Hymn number 349 as we stand together and sing, Oh, how he loves you and me. you and me oh how he loves you and me he gave his life what more could he give oh how he loves you oh how he loves me oh how he loves you and me Well, good morning. Good to see everyone. Happy Father's Day, all you dads. Thank you for being here. That's a special day, isn't it? Let's read a portion of Scripture, Psalm 24. Read a few verses there. The other Bible says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands, a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceit. And let us pray. Father, we come back to your house today. Lord, we're here to learn of you, to worship together, Lord, and to greet one another. I want to thank you for all the dads we have here today, Lord. Very special people, Lord. And so we thank you so much for them. Bless this time together, and we ask it and pray in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Well, do we have any visitors? I don't believe we do. Okay. But if you uh, you have a prayer, put it on the blue card there in the back of the pew. Or a praise. We want to hear the praises, too, because that really gives us a pump up, knowing what God's done for each and every one of us. It's been a good week. If God's in it, it's good. I'm going to give it back to Jim now. I just want y'all to know that's not my car. <laughs> okay. My car's over here. <laughs> Missionary moment of the week. Lena Eckhart. If you have a WMU book, you can see there's an asterisk beside her name, which means that's not her true name. Uh, for risk of her life, they changed her name because... People look for that, and they could possibly go over there and arrest her, kill her, put her in prison, whatever. So her name's been changed. She's a missionary for European peoples. IMB worker, and that's the International uh, Mission Board, worker Lena Eckhart meets with a group of Muslim background women in the United Kingdom who has chosen to commit their lives to Christ. The women used to meet regularly to study the Bible. Due to COVID-19 lockdowns in the UK, the group wasn't able to meet together for nearly three months. 
The women had a hard time staying in the Word because they did not have privacy during the lockdown. Most of the women have to hide their faith from their families. And the quarantine made it difficult for them to read their Bibles without being caught. When lockdown restrictions eased, Lena was able to meet with, them, with a few of them. She asked them to meet with those not in attendance and do the Bible study with them so no one missed out. In this way, restrictions during COVID-19 helped these believers become leaders and disciple makers. The cooperative program is the financial fuel for reaching every person for Jesus Christ. In every town, every city, every state, and every nation. Your support through the cooperative program allows missionaries to build gospel-centered relationships with people all around the world. Pray these women would continue making disciples and God would strengthen their ministry. Now, I run, I run up here and didn't take my Bible up here, but I, Isaiah 14, verses 24, 26 through 27 are the verses that are the focus of, of this missionary. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. We, again, enjoy those each week. I'm glad y'all are doing that. Uh, and speaking of WMU, uh, they are, you'll see in the bulletin that uh, they will meet tomorrow here at 11 a.m. in Joy Hall for the monthly meeting. Uh, all women, all women who are interested are welcome to join them and come and be a part of our learning experience. So remember that. Put that on your refrigerator and be here tomorrow, 11 o'clock. In, uh, in the Joy Hall and meet with the WMU. Uh, some other announcements. Uh, don't forget our Wednesday night service. That's at 6.30 p.m. Uh, each and every week. Uh, VBS coming up in July, July the 18th through the 20th uh, from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. So make note of that in your calendars if you would. The theme of this year's VBS is Thy Word Have I Hid in My Heart That I Might Not Sin Against Thee. And that's Psalms 119.11. <clears throat> Excuse me. For the uh, shoebox ministry for the month of June, jewelry, handbags, bracelets, combs, brushes, toothbrushes, games, dolls, and toys that boys would like, like cars and whatnot. So remember that. You can put those in the boxes in the front as you come in. Uh, and then also don't forget the bookcase back in the Joy Hall. If you have any suggestions there, see Bonnie or Linda for that. And uh, again, we say, as the bulletin says, Happy Father's Day. All right, let's move right on into our next hymn together. Hymn number 727, as we stand together and sing, Faith is the Victory, as we stand. Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise, and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe in bells below, let all our strength be hurled. Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is the victory. Faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. His banner over is love, our sword, the word of God. We tread the road, the saints above, with shouts of triumph trod. Be faithful like the world, when breath swept on o'er every field. The faith by which they conquered death is still our shining shield. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. To him that overcomes the foe, white rain but shall be given. Before the angels he shall know, his name confessed in heaven. 
Then onward from the hills of light, our hearts with love aflame, we'll vanquish all the hosts of night in Jesus' conquering name. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory, oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Amen. Thank you for singing out on that old hymn. You may be seated as we continue with our worship music this morning. This next song is a good song for Father's Day. All the fathers out there, I'd like for you to consider the words of this song and think on those. There's a great message in there for us as fathers.
I've got a couple of announcements before I get started. Uh, at the end of the service, probably Boo and Steve, we handed out some pens to the fathers in the back. They're sitting back there, fellas. Another one is next Sunday. It will be a special day, but a sad day. But uh, we are, uh, hey, Jim, we've got a pretty baby back there. <laughs> but anyway, next Sunday, we will have a dinner for Jim and Karen and Parker and that little fella if he shows up. But uh, we, want to, uh, we want to welcome everyone. But I, after the morning service, we'll go over to the new fellowship hall and there we'll have a dinner. And it's going to be sad to see Jim and Karen and all go, but God knows what's best for them. So that's what we're praying for them. Okay? So uh, turn with me if you on your Bible. Genesis chapter 22. Now this is pretty much a familiar portion of scripture, but it has so much in it. So I'm going to start reading in verse 1, go down to 14. So if you'll stand with me to read God's word and honor him, then we'll get started. Genesis 22. There the Bible says, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will, I will tell thee of. And Abraham arose early in the morning. He saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes, and he saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the donkey, and I and the lamb will, lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, laid it upon Isaac his son. He took the fire in his hand, a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, Folks, this is a very... Strong portion of scripture. 
My father, he said, here am I, son. And he said, behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Oh, please get this, it's solid. And Abram said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there. And he laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast withheld, not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, uh, behold uh, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. God bless the reading of his word, and let us pray. Father, we thank you for showing us it's in your word, Lord. This is so important because it have everything to do with Mount Moriah, but also uh, in, in the place where Jesus was crucified. Uh, and I just pray, help us to understand, Lord, what you're teaching, what you taught Abraham here, because he didn't see that day. But he also, he was a part of it. And so we just pray, help us to understand. God, lead and direct now in all that's said and done here today. And we'll thank you and we praise you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, the scripture says there in verse 1, this kind of trips people up sometimes, said God did tempt Abraham. But you have to understand something. He is not tempting Abraham to sin. He is uh, tempting him to follow God, to trust God, and to receive from God. And that's what exactly he was going to do. But the Bible says Abraham was obedient to God. Now, let's go back just a ways. Abraham, you remember God brought him out of the Ur of the Chaldees, brought him to the land, the promised land, and, oh, and Abraham obeyed him in coming. Didn't know where he was going, but God was leading. You know, that can affect us too, that God can show us where he wants us to go, but he may not necessarily show us the place. But folks, we have to trust God. That is the most important thing in all of our lives. But Abraham, he got to the promised land. And then what did he do? A famine come along. A bump in the road, if you want to call it that. A famine come along. What did Abraham do? He ran. You ever find yourself in that shape? A little trouble come along? What do you do? You turn instead of getting on our knees, talking to God, and letting Him direct us. Do we run? That's not in God's plan. God's plan is trust in Him, faith in God. Trust Him just like Abraham did. But God did not tempt Abraham to sin. But uh, He tested Abraham. He proved Abraham. And He showed him that God's plan is always the best. Praise God for that. You know what this is called? It's called faith. We talk about faith a lot. We have to have faith in God. Can we have faith in our fellow man or about ourselves? About family? No, we have faith in God completely. Walk where He leads. If He says go, we go. If He says there's a bump in the road, then we need to still be looking up to Him. That's what He wants us to do. But you know what? It all has to do with our Christian faith if we know Him. Do we know Jesus Christ? That's the greatest thing that we could ever say about our own lives. I know Jesus. I walk with Jesus. I left the land of the wicked, and I came where God would lead me. You know, in our day, what that's probably going to tell us, we came to church because we don't live that old way anymore. We come to church, and we learn about God. We love one another. We trust God. Show us messages every Sunday in the Sunday school classes in all areas like that. And he shows us that we can trust him, that we can give our all to him, but we have to let him. Not everyone will do that. 
That's, that's sad to say, but they don't. It is a walk of faith. It's a walk of faith. Now, talking about where he says that uh, uh, he tempted Abraham, I, I was looking this over in the Bible. I come to James 1, 12. There the Bible says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, tempted. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. So we can't blame God because we feel like we've been tempted. That is comes, number one, it comes from the devil. That rascal, he wants us to fail. He wants us to fall in our life, in our faith. He wants us to not trust in God as we know that we should. We've all been given a chance and opportunity to trust God because we walk this earth each and every day. We see people that are strong Christians. They may say a word to us. They may show us exactly what God has done in their life. Let me stop right there and ask you a question. Can you say in your life you've ever been tested by God? Have you said, can you say you've been proven by God? That is what God is doing. He wants to prove us. You may have went through a hard time back in your life. I know I faced one once. But God uses those things to grow us as Christians, to bring us into a stronger relationship with his own self. And that we may affect other people. That's what we're called for. We have to trust God. We have to let him grow us and make us what he sees that we need to be. What if we fight him? Then we're only harming ourselves. If we're a child of God, I believe we'll be tempted by God. But not in the way of sin, okay? It's a testing process. God, you say you have faith, God's going to test it. He's going to look you over, and he's going to use that, whatever the hard knock is, to grow you into more of a useful vessel and more of one that will walk that path of following God. Is the paths, are they always easy? I don't think so. I've never found one that's all that easy. But God, he's about it. You know what you get if you obey God in his testing? And try, you get a stronger faith. You get a, a being able to see God as the one that is building you. Because he wants us to be in strong, useful vessels and seeking him in all our ways. What do you do when hardship comes along? What, what do you do when, when things just don't go right? I lost my job or, or this happened or that happened. My family's not what it should be. Trust God. Commit it to Him. Pray unceasingly. And let Him. He'll work in your life something great if you only trust Him. That is usually the downfall of most people. They will not trust God. If you go through, like I say, a lost job, maybe a loss of a family member or a loved one, those are hard things. But you know what? God is right there. You can't, uh, you can't get away from God if you're a child. And he wants to grow you, make you what he wants you to be. I know every Christian, if you were saved young, if you received Christ, say, at a young age, you didn't understand it all. None of us have. But... As you grow in the faith, as you see maybe some hardness, you start feeling that power of the Holy Spirit working within you, and He starts growing you. You get a desire to go to church, to serve God, live for God, to tell others about God. And that's what He's given us to do, each and every one of us. So what will it be? The Bible says there in Galatians 3, 6, that Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. That is the growth that we see in Abraham. He grew because even the hard knocks. 
Life is not always easy, folks. It's not. I know when I was a kid, my dad fell about 50 foot. And he broke his back. Those were hard years. But I, I would say right now, if you could ask my dad and mom, they'd say that was the best years of our life. They had four kids raising. We drew closer to God. We studied the Bible. And God brought us through those things. It's all called faith and trust. Either we'll trust God or we're going to trust ourselves. And we have to be careful who we listen to because some people will draw us away from God, and that's not what he wants. So Abraham, he took Isaac, he took two young men, and he went on a donkey 50 miles. That's what he said in different, different uh, commentaries. 50 miles they traveled. Why would they do that? Abraham didn't really know what it was all going to be like. He believed in God. He trusted in God. He had done went through some hardships. He had almost lost his wife twice down in Egypt and in the Philistine country. God brought him through those things. If we'll trust God, learn of God, grow in God, he will bring us through the hard times. But they went to that place that God had showed him. And he told his two young uh, men that went with him, he said, you stay here. And I and the lad will go up on that mountain. And we're going to worship God. Can we compare it today? I'm going to get up on Sunday morning. I'm going to go to church. I want to hear about God. You can compare that. Also, It's called obedience. It's called that we will take what God has said in and we will uh, work on that. We'll go with it. They got up there, going up. And that's where I read in that, and I thought that was something great. Isaac said to Abraham, My father, here am I, my son. Behold the fire, the wood, and where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Folks, this is so solid. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them. You know what? God provided that lamb for me, for you. It's that lamb that I draw my salvation out of because you can go out on to Calvary from there many years later. And you see that lamb of God dying on that old rugged cross at Calvary. And he died for me, and he died for you, for the sin of the whole world. A lot of people say, that's just, a, that's just a fairy tale a story. I don't believe that. The Bible is solid. The Bible is true. The Bible will guide us into a path of righteousness. But we have to trust God. So the question is, will we receive that Lamb of God into our hearts and lives? Can we receive that Holy Spirit from God? That will show us the way of salvation. Oh, so many people in our day and time are not saved. They look into every day, I've got a good job, or I've got this, I've got that. But do they have Jesus Christ? That is the strongest question that could ever be asked. Do you know Jesus? But many, they won't. They just won't take it in. You can tell them about Jesus. They can push you aside. But where is all of that going to lead? Are they going to lead to possibly their own death? And then what? The Bible says death and then the judgment. It's coming and it will happen. This book is not a fairy tale. But it is a book that tells us truth, shows us the way of God, shows us Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that died for our sins. But we have to trust Him, folks. We have to look to Him. I wonder sometimes, how many people have I crossed their path in my life that I've not shared the love of God with, that I've not told them about Jesus and what He can do for their life? I hate to say it, but a lot of those people are probably in their graves. Why does that leave me? Does that leave me being one that desired to do the work of God? 
we have to be on course all of our lives now. Every time we cross a person, we need to either be praying or talking to that person. Because so many, so many are dying. So many are, are leaving this world undone, unclean. I found something good here I was wanting to share with you. It goes like this. A growing faith leads to a trusting faith that leads to a working faith. You see, all three of those work in the life of Abraham and Isaac, his son. A growing faith, it leads to a trusting faith that leads to a working faith. Now, we don't work our way to heaven. That's not what he's saying at all. What we do, we believe. We give our all to Jesus, and we allow him to grow us into useful vessels. Those are not afraid to speak about Jesus Christ to everyone they meet. But Abraham did believe God when he told to leave his country and faith, and he went to the promised land. That's where God led him. The lady told Moses, that's a land that flows with milk and honey. Can it get any better than that? We might all say we have good lives. Everything to be, seems to be going fine. But is it? And is Jesus in there? Because that means it all. All things in heaven are set up to reach down to lost mankind. All things that God has done. Don't you wonder sometimes, how can I be valuable to God? I mean, look, I'm flesh. I'm apt to fail, apt to sin. But God said in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. That's what we mean to God. That's what we all mean to him. Did Abraham obey? Yes, he did. He was willing at this point in time to follow God. Oh, I wish that could be uh, put in the hearts and minds of people in our day. God was working in faith in Abraham because faith is something we all have to have if we please God. Faith. Faith believing. Faith receiving. Faith working for God. Works don't get us into heaven, but it is, a, it is an ongoing thing. We sang that song some, sometimes, I work till Jesus comes. And that's what we do as Christians. That's what we're all about. But we have to trust God. We have to give it all to him. So Abraham put Isaac up on that altar and he raised the knife. Wow. Could a man kill his own son? Is that possible? Maybe out of hatred or something. But here was a father. Received one son, only one son that he loved. And he's raising his knife to butcher him and to sacrifice him to God. What did God do? He stopped him. Abraham, Abraham, I know now that you trust me. Can I tell you that is what all our hardships are about? That God gets us to the point. He say, I know you trust me. Now, now I'll bless you. I'll bless you. If you've ever been through a, a real hard time, I'm talking about a rough time. We didn't know what, what's going to happen tomorrow. You put your faith in God. You get on your knees before Almighty God. You say, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm at the end of myself. God would say, that's where I wanted you to be at the end of yourself. Now, you receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. And I'll bring you through the hardness. If you've ever seen that work in someone, you probably understand that a little better. Because I did see it in my family. God is a merciful God. He's a loving God. He's a God that wants to take care of his own. And that's what he does for his children. Is it perfect lives? No, we all know that. There's hard times in life. There's hang-ups in life. There's those things that we would say, I just don't like this. 
Well, God would say, I didn't send that for you to like. I sent it for it to trust, to get you to trust me. So after we go through those hard times, like Abraham, you know the Bible ne never says not a, another thing about Abraham going through another trial. Why? He proved that he trusted God. I just want to say this to your life. Let God prove you. Let God, if it's through hardness, let it happen. And then you'll see the hand of God coming alive in your life. And you might see other people have been through this. That they've got a testimony. I know when it con concerns my family, what I saw them go through, I've got a testimony. They brought us through that. What a wonderful God we have. He's a loving God. He's a God that wants the very best for his children. And he's more than willing to bring salvation to, to the whosoever will. Now God, he used Abraham there. When he went back down and the young men, servants, they saw them both coming back. And here you have Isaac. He's supposed to be dead at this time. Butchered with a knife. But here he comes back with Abraham. Oh, what a God that is. Praise the Lord for that. Did Abraham faith, have faith in God? Boy, he did now. When you go through something like this, you're talking about building your faith. You have strong faith. You say, Lord, I know. I know that you're going to take care of me. I know that I'm going to see you in heaven. I know that I'm going to worship you in heaven. Because of what you have proved to me. Let God prove your life, okay? Let him. Let him whatever he sees fit to bring. And your, listen, your problem will not be the same as mine. If I go through a hard time, that don't mean you go through the same hardness. God has got everything planned out for each one of us. He has a plan, a purpose. If it's to go through the hardness... Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, David said, I will feel no evil. You know why David could say that? He had been through hard times. He had Saul trying to kill him. He knew something about God leading the path for those that will truly listen to him. And that's what God wants from all of us. I don't know what your heart is today. I don't know if you've been through a hard time. I'm talking about a loss. I'm talking about sickness. I'm talking about death. I'm talking about all those things. But if God, and evidently he has, if he's brought you through that, can't we all say together, praise the Lord. He has taken care of us. He is a merciful God, a loving God. But we have to put our faith and trust in him. Now, folks, we live in a day, our society, it's all different than it was in Abraham's day or even in our grandparents' day. There's so much that tries to drag people away from church, from God. But let me say this. God has got to be number one in the Christian's life. He is our greatest priority because of what he has done and what he's going to do for us. He then said that he's, Jesus said he'd prepare a place for his his disciples, his people. That's a place to be in. That's a place to look forward to. You know that could happen today. Could happen tomorrow. We just we're out of here, Christian. But what about those that are left behind? And that's why it's so urgent that we would tell. Go and tell. Show the world what a God we have and his love and care for each and every one. I want you to think about all that. I want you to ponder on that today. Do I know Jesus? Have I given all to him? Is he my top priority? Or would I say, I've got a job, I've got kids to feed or whatever. Put God number one. You know what? He can meet your every need. That's the type of God. Yeah, he's proven it. He's proven it to me and he's proven it to others. I'm sure many of us here. God will take care of everyone, if we will only trust him. So all eyes uh, close and heads bowed. I'd like to speak to those tuning in. I don't know 
who you are. But if you're tuning in, this could be your greatest day of all your life. I give you an opportunity right now. I'm going to lead you in a prayer just to do business with God. You pray this prayer if you're not saved, if you don't know it. You say, Lord God, I know from your word now that you are a merciful God, a loving God, a God that wants to take care of your own. Right now, I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to save me from my sins because I believe you will, because the Bible says that. And if you prayed that prayer, make sure you, first of all, you pray it in Jesus' name. Then you tell someone. I think the gospel message is not to be hid. But it should be a shared with the world, friends, fellow believers. Let someone know that you were saved. And if we'll do that, God will bless you. And he'll lead you through the fires. No matter where you are or what you do, God will be right there with you. Let us know if you prayed that prayer. And let's close our service in a prayer. Father, we praise you and thank you this day for all your goodness, Lord. Thank you that you are a merciful God, a loving God. You are a God that cares for us, that you can take us upon the mountain. And through faith, you can bring us back again. That's the type of God you are, and I praise you for that. And I pray for maybe one that's prayed that prayer even here today. I would just pray, Lord, to touch their heart. Help them to share that with someone else. And we thank you and love you and praise you in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen. Hymn number 480 is our invitation as we stand together. Come every soul by sin oppressed, there's mercy with the Lord. And he will surely trusting in his word only trust him only trust him only trust him now he will save you he will save you he will save you now you know that's not all that hard only trust him just give all to him say lord god i've tried it in my life and it don't work now i want to only trust you if you'll do that he'll save you instantly thank god for that for jesus shed his precious blood rich blessings to bestow plunge now into that washes white as snow. Only trust him, only trust him, only trust him now. He will save you, he will save you, he will save you now. Yes, Jesus is the truth, the way that leads you into rest. Believe in Him without delay, and you are fully blessed. Only trust Him, only trust Him, only trust Him now. Good to see everyone. Glad you're here. Brother Matt came forward. He wanted to rededicate his life Amen. to the Lord. Ain't that wonderful? Give him a hand, would you? Amen. Love you, Brother Matt. Really do. I've got a few prayer requests i got to answer, too, so we'll get in. <laughs>